Hi, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Rads. Um, been a while since I sat down and spoke to you and did a video like this. So, hi, how's it going? I did do a vlog the other day for Arsenal, so go check that out. Cheeky little plug. Um, transfers! Yeah, Nottingham Forest are normally quiet on that front. Even though Forest have actually been more sensible, kind of been forced to be more sensible this window, it has still been full of drama and really quite heavily shaped by FFP. But only three players have signed for Forest this month. What is going on there? Don't quite understand that. I'm expecting 10 players minimum. 13 pet, I'm in. I ain't got that sort of money. I'm not paying 13 quid. Uh, uh, uh. Matt Sells is, um, of course, one of the signings. Let's talk about him. On top of, of course, Giovanni Reina and Rodrigo Ribeiro. We'll talk about those in just a moment, as well as the numerous outgoings this window. Matt Sells, 31-year-old goalkeeper from Strasbourg, 175 appearances for Strasbourg, six appearances for Belgium. Four of them came last year. And Belgium are no mugs, they're one of the best teams in Europe. So the fact that he's getting in that squad, not necessarily their first choice goalkeeper behind Thibaut Courtois, I think that's perfectly acceptable. 24 conceded and three clean sheets this season so far for Strasbourg, been their first choice goalkeeper. From what I can tell, Strasbourg fans are not happy that they've sold him at all. They're actually really quite frustrated by that. So that's only a good thing for us with the situation that our goalkeepers are a bit um, inadequate, shall we say. Um, we want someone that another team is upset to be losing and that team have done a video about Sells thanking him. So I think this is a good sign. I won't lie, when I first heard this news, I was a bit skeptical. Maybe I was just being very, very narrow-minded thinking, oh yeah, he was Port Newcastle a few years ago, so he can't be very good. That, yeah, that's pretty terrible. I shouldn't be basing it just off that. If you think about it and you research it, you realise that he has been a regular goalkeeper for Anderlecht, Ghent and Strasbourg throughout his career. They're no like, you know, Bayern Munich or, you know, anyone major around Europe, but they're, they're not exactly small clubs either. He signed a three and a half year deal at Forest and a five million transfer fee from what we can tell from numerous supports. I really, really hope this is a big signing. We really need it to be a big signing because I'm not being dramatic when I say I think if the goalkeeper situation is still an issue, then that could shape whether we stay in the league or not. It really could. We, we needed to sort it out and I really hope Matt Sells is the one. It's not the one that I at all expected us to go for, but I just hope it's the right one. Let's talk about our first signing of the window, not in order of course, but Giovanni Reina arriving from Borussia Dortmund. This is a loan deal, so I don't particularly rate loan deals too much because it's always a short term fix. You're always waiting to see if they're going to sign or we're going to have to replace them. And if that player's going to be good enough that comes in to replace them, it's just a bit of a merry-go-round. I don't particularly like it, but I do like the signing of Reina a lot. It's someone that I haven't seen play a great deal over in Germany, but whenever I've known about Rainer and Bushy Dortmund, I've always, and maybe this is just me being narrow-minded again, but I've always looked at Rainer and thought he's one of the biggest players at Dortmund or one of the most skillful and talented. And this is why I was so surprised that we have managed to get him on loan. But having looked into his career a bit more, it kind of makes sense why he's been loaned out. So in the 2020-21 season, he was a regular for Dortmund, 32 appearances. In the 21-22 season, he did actually only play 10 times for Dortmund because of numerous injuries which kept him out for America and obviously Dortmund. So that is a good thing, I think, you know. Forest don't tend to have many injuries. Last season, he did play a lot more, scored seven goals in the Bundesliga. And he, yeah, I really like the look of him, honestly. He looks very skillful and versatile, which is really important. He can play as an attacking midfielder and on both wings, which is really useful. And our depth and attack was just so thin. We just needed that extra man to come in and help us out, even just one extra player. And especially because we look at the likes of Hudson Adoy and Origi, we don't fully trust them. I mean, is Origi even gonna be here? That's something we're still waiting to hear about. But the point is, is 
thin on depth and maybe quality and attack as well. Reyna played at the top level for the last several years of his career, a regular in the American team. He's hailed as one of their very best players, and I know America aren't one of the best teams in the world, but you know they're not a bad team either, so that's a good omen, hopefully. This season, though, I think maybe because of an injury again at the very start of the season, he's found himself on the bench, as well as that injury. He's only played 14 times, so I think alone probably does make sense. He signed a new deal at Dortmund until 2026, and then been loaned to Forest, but with no option to buy. So that's a bit sad, but let's just see how he does. The final signing, of course, is Rodrigo Ribeiro. Coming in from Sporting Lisbon on loan, 18 years of age. He is four years younger than me. That, that, that makes me feel quite um, sad, really. Moving on, I don't fully understand this one, if I'm entirely honest. I just feel... If it was a permanent deal, I'd totally get it. I'd think, okay, we've got Wood, we've got a Wani. Um, you know, Wood's out of contracts as well. That's one thing you could maybe say, unless Wood stays, which I wouldn't be against. You then bring in a young lad that can, you know, be a bit like Brandon Aguilera, someone that is a really hot prospect, maybe not ready to always play, but can step in if you need them to and do a good job, you know, create something, got a bit of versatility. I totally get it and be a youngster because if you look at the forest striking options in the youth academy, we're a bit limited. There's only really a separate song that gets even close to the first team. I've, there's other strikers, but I'm talking about ones that would be on the bench, for example, if we needed them to be like recently a separate song was. But I just don't understand the fact that it's a loan because ultimately, has he been loaned to be part of the youth academy and then occasionally play in the first team? If so, Occasionally then playing in the first team, he's not going to play hardly at all. Especially if Divock Origi is still here. Divock Origi is still currently at Forest. So currently, Ribeiro has been signed and he's our fourth choice striker. And even out on the wing, what is what is like our third, fourth choice winger. So I, I don't fully get it. If Origi goes, I me it makes a lot more sense. It really does. So yeah, a bit sceptical about this one. Not doubting his ability. I've looked at some of his highlights. Again, you can't read too much into it, but at a young age, at just 18, he does look very, very mature and really, honestly, impressive. So, not really sure what to make about this one. Is it more of a prospect signing? But if so, why is it alone? I'm just a bit confused by it, but, you know, it's only another option in attack, especially if Origi goes. They're the incomings, let's now look at the outgoings. There's plenty of these. I'm gonna go over some of them a lot more quickly because I just don't really need to go into too much detail. The main one, of course, is Oramangala. We will talk about this in a bit more detail. I mean, I'm really sad about this, you know, losing Mangala. It's something I didn't expect to happen this window at all. Um, but with the FFP situation as mentioned, I feel it was inevitable and enforced that we were gonna to have to sell someone for money and that we wouldn't want to sell. I think if FFB hadn't come up, Mangala would still be here. And it's also weird the way he's left as well because he technically is still a Forest player. He's only been loaned out. But the thing is, it, it financially it still makes sense because he's been loaned out for a hefty fee, a 10 million loan fee. It's not like he's just been straight loaned. They've paid quite a substantial fee just to get him on loan, Leon, this is, and then Pretty much, it's not a mandatory, but it's like a formality that he will become a permanent player in the summer. But it isn't actually a mandatory deal. You know, he may not even officially sign for them, but there's a very, very good chance that he will. And that would probably be around about 15 to 20 million. So overall, we could actually end up getting about 30 million for Mangala. So it makes sense. It's just the fact that it's a loan. There's not actually a, ma a mandatory option to buy. That's what kind of is a bit frustrating, the fact that we have essentially loaned out one of our best players, but there's more to it than that, of course, I know that. But, you know, played pretty much every game this season, most of them anyway. Um, he's been a crucial player, even in the worst moments this season, and there's been plenty, unfortunately. He has been one of the shining lights, and, you know, we're so, so poor keeping the ball for us so much of the time, and yet Mangala is one of the best players on the ball at the club, and and keeping the ball in tight scenarios. So to let him go feels like a real big loss, but it's not like we haven't got players that can come and replace him. We have got more than enough midfielders as it is without Mangala. We've still got Sangala. Can he come good? Well, he really needs to. Yates still has a massive part to play. Danilo's looking much better now. 
Dominguez. I mean, he, he's been fantastic this season, really. Besides the end of Steve Cooper's tenure, he's been brilliant. So that's good. And you've still got Czech Cuarte kicking around. I think he might have his part to play as well. Morgan gives white Nuno will play him further back if need be. We've already seen it against Bournemouth in that second half. We can survive easily without Mangala in terms of the players that can come in and play instead of him. But in terms of the player himself, it is still quite a, a big loss. So I'm sad about that one, but good luck, Oral, at Leon. Scott McKenna then leaving to go to FC Copenhagen, made over 100 appearances for Forest, promoted with us, of course, player of the season in that promotion season. It is sad to see him go, but he's actually kind of levelled up, it really, because he's gone to probably by far the best team in his country, Denmark, and he's going to be playing in the Champions League, albeit against Man City, most likely will get knocked out, but he's going to make probably, all but certainly, a Champions League appearance very soon. So he's actually kind of levelled up. He's gone from being in the reserves in a Premier League relegation battling team to playing a Champions League round of 16 games. So it's, it's, it actually could be a really good loan for him. It really could. Gustavo Scarpa, that of course went through very early on in the window. I think even before the window opened, it was announced that he was leaving permanently to go to Brazil again. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of the club he's gone to. Got him for free from Palmeiras, of course, in 2022. So much hype and love about him and a great character. Was a bit unfortunate really not to get more opportunities and maybe if he did, we could have seen more from him. But in the end, we got him for free. We sold him for a profit. That's only good business, really. Emmanuel Dennis, he has gone back to Watford on loan again. I don't see him ever featuring for us again. So it's just one of those ones that you're just waiting to see permanently leave. But he has gone... Probably to a place that he can do better than the Turkish league where he, he didn't do anything at all really for Istanbul. Another one is Jonathan Panzo going to Standard Liège. I mean, again, it's just another one. Again, we're waiting to sell. He's not ever going to play for us again. Loaned out to Cardiff this season, didn't really do much or play much. He was at Coventry last season, played a lot more, getting them to the playoff final, but didn't stay with them. He's never going to really play for us ever again. Alex Mighton, another one that I don't really see featuring for us again, apart from maybe if we got relegated, I could see him featuring for us maybe in the championship. But yeah, it's sad with Alex Mighton because honestly, I remember back in the 1920-2021 season, he was actually quite a big player for us, especially in that lockdown season. It's one of the few good things about that season, Mighton coming on the scene and he was a big player for us that year. A loan to Sheffield Wednesday, a loan to Belgium, a loan to Port Vale now. Can he finally get a good loan? Because those first two just didn't work at all. Ethan Horvath has joined Cardiff City permanently. Um, that's good to see someone leave permanently that's just not going to play for us. He played his part in getting us up as well. Um, so, yeah, sad to see him go in that regard. Kick the final ball in the playoff final, of course, for us. But, yeah, obviously never going to feature for us again. Certainly not good enough at this level anymore was our fourth choice goalkeeper unregistered yeah just get rid he's gone to Cardiff the final confirmed deal is Brandon Aguilera going to Bristol Rovers on loan that is an unbelievable signing for Bristol Rovers bottom end of the league one he is probably going to be the best player in their team and that is no disrespect to Bristol Rovers at all but Aguilera could easily play in the championship he really could and I really feel if we gave him a few opportunities in the Premier League he wouldn't have done exactly Bad. He came on against Brentford and it was only like 10 minutes, but he looked all right. Obviously against Blackpool, he did well. That's the level he's going to be playing at. So I feel this is an unbelievably good opportunity for him. Joe Wall, he was linked with Sheffield United. That obviously can't happen now. He was linked with Leicester City as well. And Everton at last minute were interested in him too. He can't go to an English club. Now, if Joe is going to leave, it's probably going to be to Turkey. Besiktas and Fernabache have been interested in him. I think Joe probably could still leave, certainly in the summer. I mean, yes, I know he's done wrong probably and people don't like Wall anymore. And I can understand why, if he's bad-mouthed the club, like people uh, you know, saying that he has and just everything that's gone on you know, with him in the Forest team. So the fact that he's just, you know, declined like this is really sad. Um, but I think it's probably what he needs. He, he probably needs to just leave at this stage and just forget how this season has gone for him. And the final one is, of course, Serge Aurier. This one does look more likely. He could be going to Galatasaray. Like I say, window still open to the night for them. So he could very well end up going to Galatasaray, which I'm a bit sad about. We're looking at the form of Montiel up and down on loan as well. 
I wouldn't have minded seeing what Serge could do in the Nuno. He was so good for us last season. This season he struggled a bit. His contract's up in the summer. He probably won't renew it, so we won't get anything for him. Let's cash in on him now. I, I do actually get that thinking too. So, yeah, it's just one of those things we've already, I think. But other than that, yeah, only three signings, which is actually quite nicer ones. A lot of dead were cleared, um, so that's good. And there's still potentially some things that could happen in terms of outgoings as well, which is also good. So hopefully that does happen. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to us if you're new. If you have enjoyed this big transfer roundup at the end of January, I normally do it weekly, but I've been un unable to at times this month. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Up the Reds.